Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. And in today's video, we're talking about what I believe could be the end of the world as we know it. In this video, we're going to look at verses from a few different books, all related to the great earthquake that we hear about in the Bible. One of the places that we hear about this great earthquake is Ezekiel chapter 38. I mean, we already know this is a big earthquake, but look here in verse 20, where it says every wall on the planet will fall to the ground. Now, how big is a earthquake that can shake down every wall? Well, we're going to find out in this video. Now, if you're new to this channel, I ask you to go ahead and subscribe. Leave us a comment to introduce yourself. But for those who have been around for a little while, you know that we do a lot of classes from the Third Testament of the Bible. You can find links to this book in the description of this video. Audios, PDFs, classes, all kinds of stuff. This is the Third Testament of the Bible. And you'll want to get a copy of it, whether it is digital, audio, or printed. So check the description for those links. We're going to drop all the way down to chapter 55 of the Third Testament, as it briefly talks about the events that will change our world. You see there in verse 66, it's talking about how the elements will cry out. The elements shall cry out for justice and upon unleashing themselves, they shall cause portions of the earth to disappear, becoming seas and seas to vanish where land arises. What kind of earthquake would it take to cause portions of the earth to disappear, becoming seas and new land coming up out of the ocean? See, this is the level of earthquake that we're talking about. But before we get into what I believe is the cause of all it is, let's look at a few more of these verses. It says volcanoes will erupt to announce the time of judgment and all nature will be agitated and moved. Then verse 68 says, pray so that you will know how to conduct yourselves as good disciples, because that will be the precise time in which the spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine shall spread within the hearts. And this is part of the great awakening that we hear about, the spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine. We did classes on this, too. Basically, what this is talking about is recognizing not only the Messiah, which a lot of religions do. We have to also recognize our father who is the creator of all and the one who is often left out is our universal mother. That's that Marian part there. She is who nurtures us. The cartoons portrayed her as mother nature and she is who governs all things in the material world. This doctrine that is talking about is actually recognizing this and not taking all that she does for us for granted. She'll be necessary for our survival and you understand that when we get to the next section of the book to see what causes this great earthquake. What this lesson is telling us is that that Krakatoa volcano will announce the time of judgment. And it is since that time that the father's disciples will be rising up. There will be awakening. But anyway, let's go on. Look at verse 69, which says three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear. And one quarter only shall remain as a refuge for those that survived the chaos. You shall see the fulfillment of many prophecies. Now, if I really wanted to keep this video short, I could have just looked at this one verse alone. Because this is what we're talking about here. Three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear. Now, this is a separate lesson, as you see here. But that's what verse 66 was saying up there. These elements. And you have to remember that some elements are not seen will cause portions of the earth to disappear. See, this is what the Bible is for, to prepare us for that day. Don't blame our father for these events that will cause an extinction level event on our planet. He's just telling us about them and helping us to get prepared. See where it's talking about a new refuge for those that survived the chaos. People call the Bible basic instructions for leaving earth. I call it basic instructions before the level event extinction level event that is verse 70 says do not be confused because before the closing of the sixth seal great things shall happen the heavenly bodies shall show great signs and nations of the earth shall emit and of this planet three quarters shall disappear and one quarter only will remain in which the seed of the holy spirit shall grow as new life so now 
Notice this part right here where it says the seed of the Holy Spirit shall grow as new life. This is talking about that refuge there again. But coming back to the beginning of the verse, notice how it says, do not be confused. The confusion comes in because when we look back up at verse 67, it's talking about the Krakatoa volcano that happened in 1883. But in verse 66, he's talking about a futuristic event where whole continents will go underwater. That's why he says down here, before the closing of the sixth seal, these great things will happen. Now, we've done a lot of classes on the seals. You can check those out. The Third Testament has a whole section on the seals that explains them in great detail. Y'all can check out those videos or the book itself. And what you'll understand is this event talked about over here in Revelation chapter 6 actually occurred with the Krakatoa volcano, which sent a shockwave around the earth that would have caused the sky to crack three times. But that event must not be confused with what we read about over in chapter 8 of the book of Revelation, which starts off talking about the silence in heaven for a half hour. Turns out that's the period we're in. You can check out that video too. Chapter 8 is what's talking about the end of the sixth seal before the seventh seal opens. Well, then the third testament is giving us the timing of this event saying that this global earthquake will happen before the closing of the sixth seal. And like we said, we're in the half hour of silence now, so let's go on. So we're going to get signs from heaven. Notice it says that the nations of the earth shall admit. That should remind you of the great awakening when some will rise to shame and others will rise to remorse. The difference is one's going to get mad and the other one's going to get right. But then it says again, three quarters of the planet shall disappear. What could cause three quarters of the planet to disappear? 71 says humanity will begin a new existence united by one single doctrine, one single language and one single bond of peace and brotherhood. So once again, it's talking about how this remnant, these few people will survive this event. Let's jump over here to third Enoch, because I believe this book gets great detail as to what's actually going to occur. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with third Enoch. But let me just tell you a little bit about what I know about this book. When I first discovered that there was such thing as a third Enoch back in about 2015, I rushed to order this copy. But when I got it, I was overwhelmed by the technical detail in it. Even though I have a master's degree in science and an electrical engineering degree, I was bum fuzzled by the complexity of this book and was actually unable to read it until a few months ago when one of you guys came to visit us and when he mentioned the book I mentioned that I had it on the shelf and we opened it and was amazed by what we find I did a lot of prayer and I drew lots on it and it came out that I would read the entire book so my plan is to do so before I come back start from chapter one giving classes on it but I found something in here really interesting and I wanted to share it with you so let's take a look so this comes from key 118 and the way this works is you have the key and then you have the explanation of the key. The key itself simply says God's plan has no end. It is life in the house of many mansions. And then you have the explanation of what that all means. We're going to come down here to verse 14. Like I said, there's something important going on here. So let's look at this. Verse 14 is actually talking about Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. But like I mentioned earlier, this book is on a whole nother level. So when it talks about them, it's referring to them as the 12 consciousness dimensions of spiritual man and how they receive their intuitions from our father. But then notice right there how it starts talking about the sacred land in the West. This book implies that the West is the promised land. And that can be easily confirmed in other scriptural texts. Verse 15 is talking about the unification of the religions. See how it's talking about the East and the West? It's important that we share what we know. All religions have a piece of the puzzle. Not one religion has all of the truth. 
and not one religion can be rejected totally for having no truth. So what it's talking about is how when everybody combine our knowledge, we're going to be prepared to receive the living light of the Christ reigning up on the earth. Talking about the millennial age. Now, verse 16 is talking about spirit to spirit communication and how Israel, once they learn this spirit to spirit communication, will be able to act on other planetary fields. In other words, we'll be able to communicate with our brothers in the spiritual world. All of that's written in the Bible, guys. That's one way you know when you're reading something divinely inspired is it's consistent with everything else that you find in the scripture. Let's look at verse 17. It's the nitty gritty of what we're talking about here. I can probably come back and use this verse with that other verse that we talked about from the third testament and that one verse from the book of Ezekiel and make this video shorter. This is what I believe is going to happen that's going to cause the earth to go through such a catastrophic change. Yep, it's talking about a polar shift. A shift of the earth's magnetic field. Turns out we're hundreds of thousands of years overdue for a polar shift and the rate at which the poles are shifting is accelerating. Let me read this first. It says before the new story of creation happens, the earth will go through gross geomagnetic and catastrophic changes as the magnetic regions of the north and south poles release their torque, spinning the shell of the earth into a new program of existence. We ask the question, what kind of earthquake would shake down every building on the planet? We ask the question, what kind of earthquake will cause continents to go underwater and new continents to appear? I believe you're looking at it. A pole shift that creates a torque that spins the shell of the earth. It's like for a brief moment, at least I hope it's brief, the crust of the earth will be spinning in one direction and the core of the earth will be spinning in another now, I've been hearing a lot of people talk about pole shifts, but this is a scripture based channel. And although I believe those guys know what they're talking about, I have no dog on the fight until I see it in black and white. So I guess I'll be studying a little bit about pole shifts from now on. Let us know what you know about it down in the comment section. So what do we do? How do we prepare? There's only one way to prepare for this, guys. Like we said, basic instructions before this level event. Read the scripture. You can start with Exodus chapter 20. Read the Bible. Keep the Sabbath day and the feast days. Hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel. And pray for us all.